All right, tonight we have brand new details on how Joe, I never talked business with my son Biden, did talk about Hunter's business dealings and, as vice president, had his office involved. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer today demanding that the National Archives provide unredacted emails and documents related to the vice president's office colluding with the Biden family and their business associates. Here's one example. December 4th, 2015, Hunter's longtime business partner, Eric Schwerin, wrote to then VP comms director Kate Bedingfield, giving her quotes she could use from Hunter regarding his work with Burisma. She responded, VP signed off on this and that she would provide a statement from Joe's office on Burisma as well. So <laughs> how could Joe Biden, who claims he's never spoken to his son about his business dealings, which we never believed, sign off on quotes about those dealings? Now, even the White House press corps thought something is fishy here today. How do you respond to criticism that that shows there was no wall between then Vice President Biden's work and um, his family's business dealings? I understand the question. I appreciate the question. I get the question. I'm just going to let the White House counsel uh, team answer that question. I no. Yeah, I bet she is. <laughs> Joining me now, House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer. Congressman, you and I have suspected this all along. Something else, though, happened the same day the White House received that email. What was it? Well, they had the meeting. And we've had testimony, and there's emails, there's more evidence of more meetings where Hunter was told uh, that they needed to call Washington for help. Uh, we've had Devin Archer testify uh, and say that. Uh, there's evidence that points that the Burisma executives were squeezing Hunter Biden to call Washington for help. Uh, so we know that uh, Hunter Biden was communicating with the White House. This email that you just uh, posted was one of many, and we believe there are more that the archives are sitting on, where the Biden, uh, the Hunter Biden legal team, the Hunter Biden PR people, the Hunter Biden sh uh, shady characters who were paying him were communicating through him to his father, back and forth. There was no wall between Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, and his shady business dealings. So the meeting among the Burisma executives happening, clearly they needed a lifeline of some sort or some type of reassurance. And it's your contention or supposition at this point that at that point, Hunter kicked in, got word through Schwerin to the comms uh, director, comms uh, staffer at the White House, and then she sought to reassure, saying, yes, the vice president has signed off on these quotes. That's what right. you're seeing so far. Yeah. Hunter Biden has been in trouble for a long time. Burisma was a corrupt energy company. That's why Shokin, the Ukrainian prosecutor, was investigating him for the first place. Remember, Shokin even seized some assets uh, from the owners of Burisma in other countries. This is a corrupt entity. The press was picking up on this. And... The Biden, Hunter's legal team, Hunter's PR people, whoever they were, were communicating back and forth with Joe Biden, who was vice president, so they can be an official government position on this, an official government statement to the press corps, uh, reassuring everyone that everything was fine and, and you know, everything was on the up and up. This is further coordination between Hunter Biden and the federal government and Joe Biden. And remember, we believe there's coordination between the Department of Justice and the cover-up. There's two, two crimes here, the actual Biden corruption and then the cover-up. And all along the way, there have been people coordinating, people representing Hunter Biden, who were paying Hunter Biden, people who uh, were representing him in court, people who were in trouble, just like Hunter Biden, for, for crimes. And they were communicating back and forth with our federal government uh, to cover up this crime and to make sure that they could spin the false narrative. Uh, Congressman, how deep could this go? Like, how, how many people were involved in covering this up so it, it wouldn't come out, wouldn't, wouldn't come out during uh, uh, the Obama administration and toward the end of it, and it certainly wouldn't come out when Biden was running for president? I mean, how many people are we talking about, you think? Well, let's start at the top. We, we know Merrick Garland has told the National Archives not to cooperate with us. We know that someone told the IRS whistleblowers to stand down. Uh, we, we know that uh, just this week, there were, F, there were Secret Service agents that, who were working with us 
on trying to identify the people who tipped off the Biden legal team that the IRS was fixing to knock on the door. And uh, our sources at the Secret Service say that Mayorkas called them to tell them to stop cooperating with Comer and the Oversight Committee. So Mayorkas and Merrick Garland are part of the cover-up. These are the two arguably highest-ranking people in the Biden administration. Congressman, in about that fateful day we were discussing when that communication between Hunter's partner, Schwerin, and the White House comms Schwerin. director, mm -hmm. didn't the, yeah, Schwerin, wasn't the, didn't, didn't the vice president travel somewhere right after that? And where was that? He traveled to Ukraine right after that. I mean, we're putting together the timeline. We've been able to get, we've been able to get all of the, the wire transfers. Uh, we've got the correspondence. We've got sworn testimony. Now we're putting the timeline traveling uh, where Joe Biden traveled. And, and, you know, there's a pattern here, Laura. He did this in Romania. He did this in China. He did this in Ukraine. The three countries that have paid his family millions of millions of dollars that they can't account for. Never, not one time has anyone from the White House or anyone from representing Joe Biden said exactly what this family did to receive the money. I think we're starting to figure it out, especially with Ukraine. He went there to fire the prosecutor yeah. who was investigating his son for corruption. And going for another billion dollars to Ukraine uh, yesterday through uh, Blinken. Congressman, thank you so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.